All right, I hope you guys are doing well. And in this video, we're gonna show you how you can build vision-based multimodal apps using Flowwise and NAN. You know, we're finally at the stage where the language models are powerful enough to handle a variety of different file types, uh, from uh, video to audio, as well as images. And it's so important because as we develop our applications, we want to be able to do a variety of different things and handle a variety of different workflows. Uh, and so uh, Flowwise, as well as NAN, actually support a variety of different language models that support vision. Now, some of the most common and the most popular models that support vision are Google Gemini's family of, uh, of models, as well as Pixtral and Llama 2 Vision Instruct. And so when we're actually working with these language models, they are really, really powerful. I mean, they can do things like classification, they can you know, describe a variety of different images, they can do uh, OCR support, so they can actually extract data from an image and then put it into a table. And they can also do things like uh, web design as well. And so uh, it's just incredible the types of things that they can do. And so when working with Flowwise, it actually allows you to upload images uh, for further processing. And so if you actually go to the documentation, it shows you the different types of chat models that Flowwise supports uh, when it comes to images. Uh, those are things like Chat Anthropic, the Google Generative AI chat, as well as Chatalama and a few others. And then when it comes to the, the agents and the chains uh, that it supports, you can use images with the LLM chains, uh, the conversation chains, the, uh, the tool agents, and so forth. And so it's really, really powerful. And so let's go ahead and just check out uh, an example of how you can actually use this inside of Flowwise. So here we have a basic chat flow that basically uh, connects our Google Gemini models to a conversation chain, all right? And when you see here on the, um, on the actual uh, chat model, if it supports images, it'll see, you'll see this allow image uploads. And that will allow you to basically uh, toggle the image support on and off, all right? So uh, this is a pretty standard, pretty basic uh, chat flow. Uh, we can actually switch it out with, right now we have the Gemini Flash model, but we can also use the Gemini 1.5 Pro that actually does a really, really good job as well. So let's go ahead and just test it out and, and see how it works. So we're going to uh, expand it here, and then we're going to click on the, uh, the image icon, and we're just gonna open up a directory, and it's gonna be the vision samples directory. And the first image that we're gonna work on or work with is this camera image here, all right? So we're gonna ask, please describe this image. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna go ahead and it's going to uh, analyze the image and it should give us uh, an answer. So it says, the image shows a Lumix camera, mirrorless interchangeable lens camera, okay? Uh, the camera body is silver and gray, and it has a dark lens attached. So it does a pretty good job with that. Now let's ask it another question. Uh, let's go to, uh, let's see here. Let's give it the thumbnail of a, uh, of a video I did a few weeks ago. And then let's ask the same thing. We're actually just going to copy and paste. Please describe this image and the title. And what is the title of the video? All right. And so this is going to uh, take a look at it and says, all right, this image is a YouTube thumbnail for a tutorial video. The main text of the thumbnail says how to create a Flowwise AI product recommendation engine for e-commerce. So as you can see, it's, it's doing a number of different things. It's doing OCR. It's actually uh, describing the image uh, and it's telling you what's actually, uh, you know, like what is actually in the image in terms of layout. So it's doing a really, really good job. Now, let's go ahead and ask another question uh, with another image upload. And let's see here. We're going to do some um, data extraction. So let's go ahead and click on the solar panel site survey. And this is basically a table. And what we wanna do is we wanna say, uh, please extract the data 
and put it into a table. And so what it should do is it should analyze the data and then it's going to give us that same information to a table. So you can see how, you know, how practical and how helpful this could be with just a variety of different applications. Um, and so let's go ahead and I think we'll do maybe one more. And we're going to we're going to actually choose the uh, the diagram here. So we actually want to see if it understands what the diagram is all about. So let's go ahead here and we're going to say something like, please describe what this diagram is explaining. All right. So should analyze that. And it says, okay, let's go back up here. All right, this diagram illustrates a system for answering queries using both web search results and a collection of uh, PDF documents. Here's the breakdown of the process. So it's actually breaking down the entire process uh, and it's doing a pretty good job. So as you can see, the Google Vision model is extremely powerful and um, it's probably one of the strongest vision models out there uh, just in terms of its, its, its capabilities. Uh, there are other really good ones as well, such as Llama's 3.2 Vision Instruct and Pixel, but the Google model is extremely high performance and uh, it does a really great job of describing your images and extracting data and text, uh, you know, and, and doing a lot of analysis and things like that. So let's go ahead now and let's show you how to actually access this via the API, uh, because that's also important too. So if we go ahead and go to the Flowwise uh, documentation, you can see that they have they have the JavaScript and Python code for the API, and it's fairly straightforward. Um, if you actually want to load an image using the API, you can actually choose either the uh, the base64 image string, or you can actually choose just a URL, and that's actually really really uh, convenient. You, know, you don't actually have to pass in the actual image uh, up front. Uh, and so this is exactly how you would use the API when using uh, the um, the image support. All right. So now let's go ahead and let's take a look at one of the applications that we're starting to develop. And what we wanted to do is we want to be able to use our AI models, our vision models, to basically describe and um, create an HTML code just using the screenshot of a website. And so for this example, we are using uh, the Gemini 1.5 Pro model. Uh, like I said before, it's a really high performance model. Uh, and it's also very good at coding as well. So it's a great combination for being able to do vision based, you know, web design is essentially what we're looking at here. All right, so if you go ahead and click on our chat window, and we expand it, you can see that we have already uh, been doing some work and uh, we've actually taken the, the screenshot of a website called Blender. And Blender is a, uh, basically a 3D modeling software, open source. And this is the website. And so what we did was we created a screen capture of this website, and then we uploaded it to our, uh, our chat flow. And then we said, based on the image, please create a website HTML code that includes Tailwind CSS styles. Now, previously when I did this, uh, I did not include this the Tailwind CSS styles, and the results were terrible. <laughs> and so, uh, by actually including this, uh, you can in dramatically, you know, really make your your designs a lot better. And so, what it did was it actually analyzed the image, and then the Google 1.5 Pro model basically gave us the uh, the HTML interpretation of the uh, of the image. Now, this is not a complete one for one. And so, for example, if we go ahead and I believe it is, let's see here. If we go ahead and we actually take a look at this initial file and we open it up, you can see that it actually does, if you compare it to the original, it, it does a pretty good job, I think, uh, in terms of trying to describe the HTML, okay? So again, it's not going to be a one-for-one, -one, exact one-for-one -one description, but it's going to be close. So you can use this uh, potentially for, you know, getting uh, inspiration and using reference uh, websites uh, for creating your, uh, your HTML code. All right, so if we now go ahead and keep scrolling through, 
uh, we can see that we've actually done it a couple different times. Uh, and so every time you run these models, it's actually going to give you slightly different results. And that, that goes for whether you're using the same model or you actually, especially if you're using different models. So if we go ahead here and we uh, check out the second, uh, the second version of this, the second trial, you can see that it looks like it pretty much did the same thing. It actually added a little bit more uh, detail at the end. Uh, so if we actually check out the first one, it basically kind of gave us a very short uh, version of it. And then this one gives us a much longer version uh, and it gives us the footer and uh, it's a much better, it's a much better version in my mind. And, and this is really important because you want the websites to be, it, again, it doesn't have to be one for one, but uh, it's good if you can capture as much detail as you can uh, from your images, all right? So this is essentially how we can use vision-based models for a variety of different tasks. And let me see here. If we go ahead and check out the NAN version, all right? So we actually did one where we were using NAN to do exactly the same thing. And this is really interesting because, you know, in the previous version, what we were doing is we were actually uploading an image of the website and then we were basically doing all the analysis within Flowwise. And with this version using NAN, what we're doing is we're basically, uh, if we go ahead and click on the chat window, what we're doing is, is we're actually just typing in a website address. And then on the back end, we have an automation that can actually take that, take that website, create a screen capture, and then do the exact same thing, you know, generating uh, HTML code uh, within NAN and then passing that back uh, to Flowwise uh, so we can actually take a look at it. So again, if we go ahead and we click on the, uh, the download button here, and then we, uh, we take a look at this version. I believe this was either using Gemini 1.5 Pro or it could have been using Llama 3.2 Vision Instruct. But you can see how the basic elements are, have been captured, right? If we go ahead here and we can see that it looks very similar to the original uh, Blender uh, homepage, okay? And, uh, and so doing it this way, using NAN, it really gives us the ability to, to simplify our workflow. And instead of having to manually create a screen capture, uh, we can just do automatically and we can just paste in or, or add in the, the website that we want to use, and then it'll just do it for us. And so if we go ahead and we check out some of the other uh, versions of this, uh, we did this with a couple of different websites. So this is uh, like another 3D modeling homepage that we were using as a reference. And this is the generated version. And then this is that same one. So again, this is using a pricing. And by using Tailwind CSS styles, it can really, really enhance the design of our generated HTML, right? And so this is another one that we used. It's fairly similar, They're pretty much the same. Uh, and that's another one, All right? So as I said before, it's always a little bit different, but usually it kind of sticks close to the, the, the actual original design. So in this case, it's red, but um, this, is, uh, this is actually really good because, you know, if you want to get consistent results, these language models, these vision-based language models can do that for you, all right? So as you can see, using vision-based LLMs are really a great way uh, to enhance your applications and, uh, and just give them way more capabilities than you could just with text. But what we want to do now is we really want to take this to the next level and we actually want to continue working with this uh, and add even more capabilities. So in the next video, we are actually going to uh, create an AI workflow using sequential agents that not only generates the HTML from the images, but also adds uh, text and images as well so that you get a complete landing page. So I will see you in the next video.